Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be my one week postpartum update. So it's really really weird to be back and I'm trying to get back into the swing of things as much as I can. Now if you are here to find out more about my little baby, baby Stanley, then I've already posted a video with his one week update which I will leave linked down below. A lot of you gave me some feedback in that video in terms of how to do these video updates moving forward and what I'm going to do is combine them into one because that seemed to be what the majority wanted and I will show my belly at the end of every video and things like that and I think that's probably the best decision because ultimately as I get further and further away from having a baby there's going to be less to talk about isn't there but I actually think this is the best way for week one anyway because obviously I've just had a baby and there's been loads of changes to my body that I want to sort of go through and chat about so I'm going to start with my mental health I think first because I think it's a really really important thing to talk about especially after having a baby there's so much that happens to your body and there's so much that you go through and it can be quite an emotional time even if it is a really happy time so I have been really up and down and I think that's quite normal actually. I obviously had quite an emotional pregnancy with Stanley because I was so so worried that he might end up having my syndrome like Daisy did and I anticipated a poorly baby and a NICU stay far more than I would ever admit to anyone at the time. I was just fully prepared for it. I had the specialist cleft bottles, I was prepared for a long stay in hospital and it was emotional because when he was born, not only was he born in the same room that Daisy was born in, they were not able to tell us that, like in that moment in those first few hours, whether or not he was okay. So we had to wait to the following day, which was obviously very emotional because I had to stay in hospital and I was hoping that we'd just be able to go home. Um, and then to add to all of that, they actually wheeled me round to the bay where I was while I was in with Daisy, which was right at the very end of the postnatal ward in the corner. And I spent five days there crying my eyes out behind the screen. And to be back there was very, very hard. And like the minute they left us to it, I like was lip wobbling all over the place. I was very emotional. I just went right to Mark and like asked him to hold me. And it was really, really tough for the both of us. But thankfully, the next day at around 11 o'clock in the morning the paediatric team did come and see him and assess him and they gave us the all clear to go home and that was an amazing feeling because we just couldn't believe it it wasn't even like we were on cloud nine we were just in shock and when we were eventually allowed to go home i remember very clearly like walking through the labor ward and going through the big double doors with the big buzzer and then we're like right we got through one hurdle and then it was like down the corridor and we got down the corridor and then we got to the stairs and we got down the stairs and then we got to like the big open reception area and then we finally finally walked through those hospital doors and I remember the fresh air hit me in the face and I just felt like the whole world was glowing and Mark and I turned to each other and we were just like this is so weird and he said I'm expecting someone to just come and take him off us like I can't believe that they're just letting us go and it was really really like poignant it was just one of those moments you know that you'll never ever forget and we were both so emotional and we put him in the car and we just looked at him sat in the back of the car in his car seat wearing the hat that Daisy was supposed to come home in and it was then that I burst into tears and Mark held me and loads of people were like walking all around us and there were cars probably waiting for our spot but we just needed that moment to like take it all in and bringing him home has been amazing but what I hadn't like sort of bargained on was that I think in my head I thought well if he's poorly it's going to be really really hard and I'm going to find it really difficult and I'm going to be very upset and then I thought and if he's fine it'll be hunky-dory but what I didn't realize is how I've struggled I'll be honest to accept that no one's going to come and take him back so every single time I have a midwife appointment or the health visitors coming today at lunchtime and I'm, I'm anxious because I'm like oh please like let me be good enough to keep him and please let him be healthy enough to stay at home and that's just something that I think all mums experience anyway because you always get nervous when those appointments are you know coming around and you've got someone coming to your house you want to make sure that you like look okay and like you're managing and all of that jazz but for me in particular I've just found it really really tough and um, but at the same time I've been so in love and I feel like he has healed me a lot like I feel like I've 
taken a lot of comfort from just being able to hold and love my baby and I've also fallen in love with Bill and Daisy even more as well because Bill I went back to work when he was eight weeks old and that was really really bittersweet and challenging and obviously with Daisy I just really appreciate that she's here and like I have my beautiful daughter and I've got my three beautiful children I think I'm very very lucky so that's how the old head spin in terms of like physical recovery and things like that i am doing quite well i would say that my recovery this time around has been really really positive um it does seem to get better with every baby in my opinion although what i will say is that with every subsequent baby you do get more after pains which can be very very uncomfortable thankfully this time around they only lasted a couple of days for me and would be heightened every time i would pump um but i have felt quite well in myself. One thing that is different this time around though is just the the way my body feels and I don't know if that's just because of the sheer size of him because he was nine pounds six ounces at one day early which is my biggest baby thank god he wasn't late like the other two and I just found that like my joints have been very very sore uh, my pelvis was very sore initially my back's been very sore and actually vaginally I would say like my recovery's been great I only suffered two grazes which is minimal and I've not had like too much problems with like bleeding or soreness down there. Aside from that though, my worst symptom has to be <laughs> postpartum water retention and swelling. I get this with every single baby and I get it really really bad and if you actually looked at my labour and delivery video you'll notice that I swelled up anyway towards the end which is, is normal but if you see once I've given birth there's one clip in particular where my face is flipping huge and Mark's even taking it from an above angle which is more flattering isn't it normally but I've just swelled up and my face looks like it did when I was like a size 18 to 20 and it was just water retention like I was really really puffy my hands have been really puffy and my feet have been really puffy I do think in the last couple of days so around day eight I started to slowly lose that water and I'm still losing it now and I've noticed this because I have now started getting night sweats which is normally when you start to flush out all of that excess water and the night sweats started around day eight and have continued so now I'm waking up in a pool of sweat which is just delightful and um it's it's not great and I have felt quite self-conscious about my body not even so much my tummy but just the the face and the hands and the feet the bottom of my legs and also just adjusting to having massive massive Pamela Anderson boobs because I am expressing um, at the moment because Stanley was diagnosed with posterior tongue tie. He has had his frenulotomy. We had that done at day four, I think that was. And we're still struggling to get him to latch. He had to go onto bottles because of the sheer issue of him being dehydrated because he just would not feed from me at all and um he is getting used to bottles and unfortunately that means that getting him to latch onto me is even more difficult i have been using these bad boys which are breast shields and they haven't really had any effect for us whatsoever and while i avidly wanted to breastfeed it's getting to the point where the the trying is getting me so upset because I feel rejected by my baby, I feel stressed, I feel under a lot of pressure, I feel like every single person I see from like a midwifery or a breastfeeding counsellor or a health visitor perspective all have differing views as well like one midwife was like you can only do what you do just be happy go with it whereas ones i saw like the other day seemed a bit more like oh you should go to another like breastfeeding support group and oh you should try this and it's quite hard because you feel like you've made a decision and then other people try and like talk you back round and i am what i would say is a natural breastfeeder with bill it came very very easily to me i have a great supply but your baby isn't necessarily always the same and as much as i wanted to do it i just don't feel like it's worth the pain that it causes me um expressing in itself is hard work and is very very time consuming so i think when i feel ready and i'm not putting any pressure on myself i am going to wean off expressing and we are just going to pursue a life of formula and i'm going to be really really proud of what i've achieved because i have not had easy journeys with any of my babies really uh, whether feeding or otherwise and i'm just proud that i'm raising three beautiful kids at the end of the day and i can't say fairer than that and that is the exact same advice that i would give 
to you as well. In terms of blood loss now at day 11, I am using the slim maternity pads from Boots. Boots maternity pads are by far my favourite. I would definitely recommend them if you are in the UK because I just think they're the best. I've tried them all. I really have every single supermarket and Boots are my favourite. Uh, it's nice to be in the slim ones again because I don't feel like I'm wearing a nappy anymore and my blood loss is very, very minimal. Although you will notice yourself if this is your first baby, if you do move around a lot and you start to go for walks or you just become a little bit more active as you recover, you will find that your blood like will get heavy again and then it'll come off and then it'll come back again and that's absolutely normal. Another tip while I'm talking about vaginas is that if you do suffer a graze or a tear or anything like that, one thing that I can recommend is that when you go into the toilet, lean forward as far as you can and your wee will kind of drip like vertically down that way rather is like going down your bits that's a really good tip or you can get a squeezy bottle full of water and like squeeze that onto the area as you need to dilute the acidity of your urine because it can be quite sore that's something that i did with bill the first time around but this time around and with daisy i've actually been really lucky just not to feel any discomfort at all um another thing is that i probably had the easiest postpartum poo yet with bill i got severely constipated because i wasn't looking after myself enough and drinking enough water but this time around i just really really made sure that I kept on top of all my fluids and I went to the toilet the first time around at around day four and then every other day at the moment I'm getting urges to go. I have felt a bit of discomfort though in that area because I've had a lot of trapped wind while my body readjusted itself and that is very very normal so just be aware that like you might need a little bit of alone time on the toilet and give your other half the baby and tell him that you just need like half an hour and go up there and just take it slow another thing you can do is if you've got like a little stool or something pop your legs on that so your legs are slightly more raised and that will help you to sort of you're in like a squatting position almost then on the toilet and that helps you go a little bit more easily it's a bit tmi but i'm just trying to help <laughs> so i guess the final thing to talk about is like my body and how i'm feeling about it which is kind of i'm okay actually i don't know how much weight i gained in this pregnancy because i didn't allow myself to get obsessed with like numbers on a scale because i lost a lot of weight previously to conceiving Stanley and I didn't want to get obsessed about like weight gain because I didn't think it would be very healthy for me so I don't really know what I'm at at the moment because also our scales have run out of battery but in terms of the clothes I'm wearing I was able to wear like size 12 to 14 throughout my pregnancy anyway and a lot of clothes that I was wearing before conception I was able to sort of make work for me so I don't think I particularly gained tons of weight but I do think that I gained a lot of water weight which I'm still flushing out of my body at the moment. I was also told that I had a very very large placenta and then obviously Stanley was £9.6 so there was a good chance that there was at least a, a stone that I lost very easily <laughs> from the moment of giving birth. Um, I definitely have fat on my body though. I can feel like that my my body has like squishier parts and there will be some work to do. So I am going to start back at Slimming World when I feel ready. I think I'm going to wait until I'm six weeks postpartum because that's generally when you get the okay to start doing things like exercise and look after yourself a bit more. And I don't want to put too much pressure on myself because like I said, I'm only 11 days postpartum and I can't even remember my name half the time. My belly is okay. Um, I think like I've got excess skin anyway from being overweight in the past and this is my third baby so it's nothing that I wasn't expecting and I didn't actually get any new stretch marks so all of my stretch marks were just old ones and I suppose that's always a plus isn't it um but I will show you my tummy and then I will let you go and then I'll be back next week for a combined video so if you are new then don't forget to subscribe and stick around but yeah let me go and get this horrible tummy out for you brace yourselves so this is me without any clothes on and you know what considering he was nine pound six ounces and i had a very very big bump towards the end i'm not too unhappy with this you can see here this is all doughy and loose and squishy and not very nice and then this is it from the front so you can see where the squishiness is still i still don't feel like my body's completely gone back to the same shape yet so maybe in, in the next couple of weeks it will change i don't know but that is one week postpartum so yeah i hope that was helpful and you enjoyed watching as always if any of you are approaching labor very soon then good luck and just remember that you do come out of it alive on the other side and everything is going to be okay so yeah thank you so much for watching and i will hopefully see you next time
Bye.